Hi everybody, so the average price of graphene these days is in the region of $200,000 a tonne or so and that seems like a lot of money particularly when you think about the average price of graphite which is in the region of $150 to $350 a tonne. So there's a big price difference between the two and it seems quite attractive but when you think about it a little bit then a tonne remember is a, a thousand kilos and I've got about half a kilo of graphene right there so that's only about $100. And when you use it, of course, you don't use that much. So it's one of the big reasons why making your own graphene has fallen by the wayside. Because making your own graphene in small amounts, well, it requires some pretty difficult and dangerous and expensive chemicals. And then, of course, if you're socially conscious, you have to dispose of all the waste properly. So it can get more expensive to make it than it is to buy it, which is a curious thing. I actually still make my own. However, if there were a simple method of making it that was easier and cheaper, clearly it would be so much cheaper to make. And of course there is one. It's what Gein did at the beginning when he put a bit of sellotape on a lump of graphite and peeled it apart and apart. So the issue isn't making the graphene, it's making lots of the graphene. Now in video 1932, we looked at a methodology for making graphene in layers to attach to a background. Now that's really really useful for certain applications, you know, things like batteries, supercapacitors, heat pads, um, speakers, that sort of thing. Brilliant because it comes already made for you to do something with it. You don't have to do things like clean it and mix it with the glue and stick it on. It's all just ready to use. But of course it would be nice if there was a way to make a volume like that. There was also cheap, simple and effective and easy to use because then you could use it in things like oh the epoxy resins maybe like uh, what's his face did tech ingredients uh, concrete you could use it in maybe put it on plastics that sort of thing so a bulk method that was simple and straightforward would be absolutely brilliant that's where this comes in now <laughs> <laughs> the channel used to be about graphene and I had a look through and counted the graphene videos. There's something like 198 graphene videos on how to make it and use it. So of course there are systems where we can actually do that and perhaps one of the easiest ones was this. This is clearly a kitchen blender and it was Trinity College Dublin who came up with this one. Because if you think about how Gaim did it, he was shearing off the graphene platelets from the graphite lump. And this thing, of course, right there has a shear. So if we stick some graphite in there with some water and turn it on, then it should shear. And it does. It creates shear and turbulence. The only problem is the graphene, as it peels off, wants to go straight back on again. And so you need to put something in there to help it peel off and to prevent it sticking back on. And what Trinity College Dublin did was use this stuff, washing up liquid. And we did a couple of videos on this method actually. And it does indeed produce high quality graphene that is easy to use if you want it in a liquid form. Because getting it out and cleaning it was a bit of a nightmare. However, Research never stops, does it? And this is from a paper called Kitchen Chemistry 101. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. So anybody who wants to read up on this can read up on it. And they were worried about the same kind of things. That is, making a graphene that was easy to get out into a powder form that wouldn't require a huge amount of washing or a huge amount of disposal cost. And they looked at three things. Blood milk and eggs. Turns out that the proteins in these materials will act in the same way as the dishwasher soap with the huge exception of they're easy to get rid of. The proteins in these things are, are things like bovine, uh, bovine serum albumin, lactoglobulins, that's what you find in milk, and these you'll find lysosome and um, olvalbumin and that's in the egg white and in blood you find haemoglobin and they practiced on these things and they found actually that the blood although it worked wasn't brilliant so I did think about going down to the abattoir and getting a pint of blood or even you know I suffer for my art some of my own blood 
but I decided in the end not to. So blood and eggs work, just not brilliantly. The best thing that works is bovine serum albumin and lactoglobulins. Now in milk we've got three main proteins as well as lots of sugar and lots of water. We've got the lactoglobulins, we've got the serum albumin and we've got casein which is the stuff you find in cheese. So if you get some milk that has had the casein removed what you're left with are the two main proteins we're actually after and of course there is a product where they remove the casein and it's this stuff, whey powder. This particular bag of whey powder is chocolate flavoured but out of 100 grams of this, 71 grams of it is the proteins that we're looking for. Now in the research paper what they found was it was astonishing how lax you could be about this. I mean sure enough there were parameters in which it performed better but it would work with a huge range of parameters, down from next to nothing to 100 grams of this per litre, down from 20 grams to 100 grams per litre of graphite. So it's just this massive range of what would work by sticking it in a kitchen blender to give you high concentrations of graphene in water, because a high concentration of graphene in water is something like three to four milligrams per milliliter. It's not a huge amount. And they were getting seven or eight milligrams per milliliter, which is fast, and they were getting it in half an hour. Okay, so there really was just such a huge range that they used, and all of them worked. So if you read the paper, you'll find out. So we don't need to be that precise about this. So I'm going to add 500 milliliters of deionized water in there and 50 grams of my graphite. Now the graphite I'm using is this stuff. This stuff's actually really rather beautiful. It's about 150 microns across. They used anywhere between 45 to 250 microns. So again, the graphite platelet size isn't that important. However, the bigger the plate is, then the bigger your graphene sheets are and the more conductive it is. So if you use quite a large graphite, then you're going to find it works really quite well. And again, anywhere between sort of 5 grams and 50 grams is it's going to work in that 500 milliliters of water. And then we add our proteins. Now this, remember, is bovine serum albumin and lactoglobulin, and we need about one and a half grams of protein in there for what we've added. So I'm just going to put a teaspoon in. And again, it really doesn't matter the kind of numbers that we use. It is kitchen chemistry par excellence. Close that up, and we'll give that a blitz. OK, we need to blitz it for about half an hour. And after half an hour, turn it off. Now, it will be foamy because we've put some stuff in there. What we need to do is leave it to separate and to degas. So the gas will just come out of the foam. The heavier particles of graphite are going to sink to the bottom and we're going to get a black layer in between, which is the graphene. So I've scraped off some of the foam and there it is. It's kind of a blue-black colour, apparently it's stable in suspension for about two months. If you want to separate it out you need to centrifuge it uh, 45 minutes at 1500 rpm. Now the proteins which now coat the graphene prevent it from restacking so you'll get a dry powder that way. If you're going to use this I wouldn't bother, I mean it's already really nicely dispersed. Just chuck that in some sand and cement and you're going to have yourself a graphene improved concrete. To prove that it's graphine, a graphene, well you really need a Raman for that and you're looking for the G and D bands. I'm going by what the paper said, the paper said it's graphene and I have no reason to disbelieve them. But there we go, a tub full of graphene made from, well, blood, sweat and tears? No, no, blood, eggs and milk and milk is the best. In the kitchen blender for half an hour. Don't think you're going to get a better, easier method for a little while yet. So, so it's a bit of a revelation if you think about it, because you can make graphene from a kitchen blender, water, graphite, and blood, if you really want to, milk or eggs. Turns out milk works the best, but I suppose if you're a vampire and you want graphene, blood is going to be your option. So I hope you enjoyed the video. As far as using it, well, that's up to you guys. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. But to make it, it's a piece of cake. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and please do remember to like and subscribe.